Thank you for joining me on We Are Not Alone. I'm Lou Rosano, and I'll be your host on this 12-part series in which the basic and essential aspects of the UFO phenomenon will be discussed in depth and presented as factually as possible. The show is sponsored by the Miami UFO Network and MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, an international scientific organization composed of people seriously interested in studying and researching the phenomenon known as unidentified flying objects or UFOs. MUFON is the acronym for the Mutual UFO Network, which was founded in May of 1969 and which held its first annual international symposium in 1970. MUFON firmly believes that a concentrated scientific study by dedicated investigators and researchers will provide the answer to the enigma of UFOs. During the next 12 weeks on We Are Not Alone, you will learn about the Roswell incident, the government cover-up of the existence of UFOs of an extraterrestrial origin, crop circle formations, and the unexplained animal mutilations that have been going on all over the world that have been closely associated with UFO sightings, the abduction phenomenon, and some possible explanations as to why a technologically superior alien race may be conducting experiments on some of our people. We'll also cover reports of UFOs and other close encounters from around the world, the alien autopsy controversy, certainly, as well as raising some insightful questions such as, where are they from? Why are they here? What do they want? As the show progresses, we'll explore an aspect of the UFO phenomenon that has rarely received adequate coverage in the commercial media, namely the possible impact on society and on our human evolutionary development of if an alien presence is actually revealed, including the sociological, psychological, religious, and philosophical implications. Some of the guests that will be appearing on We Are Not Alone um, include an expert on the Roswell incident who's here with me today, a licensed clinical psychologist and several hypnotherapists who have clients who have reason to believe that they have been abducted by aliens, the state section director for Dade Broward and Monroe County of the Mutual UFO Network, and many others who have had a personal experience related to UFOs and extraterrestrial biological entities. On each show, we will feature at least one local resident of Dade County who believes that he or she has had a personal close encounter. My first guest today is Phil Solomon, who has been seriously studying the UFO phenomenon since 1950, or actually the late 40s to be more precise. Mr. Solomon works as an architect whose area of specialization is forensic architecture and he often appears in court as an expert witness when the structural aspects of a building are pertinent to the case. Phil Solomon is a graduate of the University of Miami, class of 1964, my old alma mater. And uh, Phil also teaches classes on ufology uh, in the adult education program of Dade County Public Schools. How are you doing today, Phil? Just fine, thanks. Oh, um, thanks for being my first, my very first guest on We Are Not Alone. Um, Phil, I hope you're ready to answer a lot of questions because I have a lot of questions for you related to the Roswell incident. I know you've been studying this for many, many, many years. That's and, right. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're a walking encyclopedia of facts and, uh, on, on uh, ufology in general. But today we're focusing on Roswell because, uh, because it's so important. Um, for the benefit of some of our viewers who may not be familiar with what occurred in Roswell, New Mexico back in July of 1947, let me begin by saying that for ufologists like myself and Phil, uh, the incident at Roswell is of supreme importance and has become the landmark case for anybody who is seriously interested in the UFO phenomenon and of the apparent U.S. government cover-up of that incident. Phil, let's start off by, a answer me this, where exactly is Roswell and why is it so important to uh, ufologists? That's, that's rather easy. Roswell is northeast of El Paso, Texas, about 150 miles, and it's uh, approximately 120 miles 
southeast of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm. Uh, very close uh, to Los Alamos, New Mexico, where, of course, the experimentation on the explosion of the atomic bomb took place. Uh, in that area, there was a very high degree of technological development toward the end of World War II and subsequent to the end of World War II. So it would be a natural point of large interest for anybody trying to obtain information about the progress of the United States government. Hmm. Some people theorize that uh, a lot of UFO activity, and you're sort of leading me into my next question, uh, some people theorize that a lot of UFO activity occurred around New Mexico in 1947 because of the first detonation of the atomic bomb in Hiroshima that year, coupled with the fact that Roswell is so close to an atomic bomb testing ground. Right. Is that the case? What do you yes, think? Yes, White Sands, New Mexico is uh, an area that uh, the government had selected as being remote enough to uh, take the activity of the experimentation of explosions of atomic arsenal uh, pieces and not to alarm the entire nation. It wasn't that close to any civilized uh, area of large population. Mm. Uh, so that area being remote was a perfect place for this type of experimentation. Right, right. But I think what's significant is that usually um, from all of my studies and reading, uh, there, there, there always seems to be uh, increased UFO sightings around areas of, uh, where there's atomic energy being used. Naturally, there would be because atomic energy, the study of it and the resulting physics that came from it uh, was all very brand new to the world. Uh, the Second World War had produced more technology in a few short years than man had ever seen in the history of mankind before. So this rush to get cataloged the new physics information would naturally stir the interest of anybody who was, in fact, watching the development of this country and its government. Right. Um, what was, let's give, I want to touch upon that a little bit more later towards the end, but so that for the sake of the viewers, so that they really are very, up to date on the nuts and bolts of, of Roswell, um, and the factual side of Roswell. There's also a very theoretical side, and there's a lot of speculation that one can infer from that. But um, maybe you could talk a little bit about sure. Ma Major Jesse Marcel and his role in the uh, whole right. Roswell scenario. 